so it's May and what can we sew this month? Um, I'm in UK, I'm zone 9 uh, in Sussex and there's still the occasional frost but generally the weather has now warmed up sufficiently enough for you to be able to sew all manner of things and you can sew directly into the ground as well if that's what you want to do. Now I tend to sow it, my seedlings, uh, I tend to sow my seeds into module trays or seed trays. I've done that for years, just how I like to, to work. I like a little bit more control and I find that if you germinate your seeds when the, where there's something uh, where they are warmer, then the germination rate is a little bit better. And also if your plants are a bit bigger when you plant them out, they have a little bit less um, or they have a little bit more stability against uh, rodent or slug attack and I suffer from both so for me if the plants are a bit bigger then they can they can withstand a little bit of hassle from them now um, like I said you can plant directly into the ground now so all the seeds that I'm mentioning this month you can uh, sow direct the exception for sowing into modules if that's how you sow are things like parsnips carrots and potatoes all of those don't take kindly to pot growing and are much better sown direct wherever you are. If you can cover them with some horticultural fleece once you've sown them, then all the better. Um, horticultural fleece is, it, yeah, it obviously keeps things warmer, which is great if you're germinating seed, but also keeps the wind off. So when your seedlings are little, one thing they really hate is being damaged by wind so um, I tend to fleece over my seedlings till they're just a bit bigger before they can um, before I uncover them and, and leave them naked um so let's have a think about this month we'll start with flowers now um if you follow me you will know that I um love having flowers in the garden it obviously makes it really pretty and the more flowers you have the more variety you have the more you will encourage insects to your garden and the more insects and bees and birds uh, bees and butterflies and things the better your garden will be it'll be a healthier environment and the idea behind it is if you can create like your own little mini ecosystem everything will look after itself so you might get a, um you know ladybirds will eat green fly etc etc so one um, insect will predate on another one and you won't need to use any chemicals or any nasties to get rid of whatever you don't want it just all looks after itself so in terms of flowers there are so many to mention a bit like herbs so many but things that I grow especially now now the weather is warmer you've got zinnias they're my favorite things in the world I love zinnias and to be honest they don't really take kindly to being sown when it's a bit cooler so may perfect time to start those so zinnias and cosmos cornflowers they can be sown pretty much any time of the year they don't mind a bit of cold but um dahlias marigolds nasturtiums those flowers are the ones that i sow now they're very fast germinating and you will get a good um, show for them through the summer and you know a lot of those plants I tend to plant them in between my veggies so it uh, not only looks pretty but uh, yeah serves a purpose as well. Right so the other veggies that are really good to sow this month are things that you will be eating later on in the year. Kind of it's, it's a little bit like plan, planning ahead. What you sow this month is going to really affect what you have later on in the year and some of those things need to be sown now um, before it's too late almost. So I'm talking about things like cabbages, brussels sprouts, kale, all of those things should be sown in this this month if possible because they're going to be giving you food when the season is finished and you want to well effectively you want to extend the season so when it's kind of coming autumn on on through to winter you want to be eating those things so if you sow them now that's what you'll be doing. Um, the same applies to leeks, swedes, Get them in the ground now and then you'll be harvesting later and that's all about being self-sufficient is trying to make a plan so you can eat food all year round um one of my favorite things this month to sow is beans now i love beans so i grow quite a lot of them up with grams i love climbing beans so you've got things like runner beans french beans and dwarf beans all of them are good to go this month and 
they really germinate quite readily when it's warm so i as i said before i do mine in pots but you can sow direct in the ground just be careful rodents do like them as well so you'll you might get a bit of mice predation if you uh, plant them out directly um and then you've got things like the cucurbits so courgettes uh squashes pumpkins and cucumbers they are warm lovers as well and I would probably not be plant, not be sowing those directly into the ground now. The reason for that is they, they're heat lovers. So maybe germinate them inside on a windowsill. You can germinate quite a lot of seed in a very small space. And then when they're that bit bigger, you can then plant them out. But they're all good to go. Um, the differences in between winter squash and summer squash is that the winter squashes um, store very well so there's no actual difference with um when you sow them you'll see that um some packets will say this is a winter squash etc there isn't any there isn't any difference with when you uh, sow them or how you treat them through the season but it's just their storage um, capabilities so uh, a winter a winter squash is something that can be stored for a longer period i like to grow a bit of both and then you can sort of eat, eat some now and then then save some save some in the larder in fact what are we now we are april uh, we are may and I think probably until last month, I was still harvesting some squash that I had saved over the winter. If you store them right, they last for ages. So that's a really good way of eating fresh food um, through the season as well. And then lastly, you've got things like, um, things that I, I call um, successional crops. So I always try and successional sow things like radishes, uh, beetroot and lettuce through the season in different sections or di different times just to make sure you always have something growing um they're good to go this month as well and then you've got a uh, sweet corn i don't actually grow sweet corn which is why i didn't think about it but um sweet corn is good good to go this month and then lastly just about herbs really i grow a lot of herbs and this month i am going to be sowing par uh, parsley and then some basil and some dill now there's obviously loads more herbs I can mention, but I'm not going to talk about them all now. But to be honest, basil is one of my favourites and I grow quite a lot of Thai basil because I do a lot of Thai cooking. And I tend to sow that um, into um, a, a pot and then I prick it out into a module uh, tray to grow on. But you can sow direct and I like growing them around my tomatoes because I think that combination works really well. I think that's probably enough for you to be getting on with. Um, thanks for watching and I'll see you next month with what to sow in June.